Hi there. So today I wanted to share with you a project that I've been working on or tinkering on recently and I'm calling this whole thing Frankensynth and uh, the idea is that I'm taking a bunch of low-cost components and kind of smashing them together uh, to em emulate the, the function of a music workstation. And so a music workstation is generally uh, like a big keyboard with a lot of functionality built into it. There's probably gonna be synthesizer functionality, some sort of like rhythm section, all this kind of stuff, um, as well as various kinds of like songwriting tools, like an arrangement mode and things like that. And um, so synth, or sorry, uh, music workstations, they, I think they're really geared towards a professional career musician, you know, who's sitting down every day writing music and you just kind of want one big machine to, to do it all in a sense. And uh, they tend to be pretty expensive, you know, $1,500 or more. Um, and uh, basically what I was going for, I'm, I'm definitely not a professional musician. I'm not trying to make a career out of this. For me, music is, it's a hobby and it's uh, something that I just do for fun and relaxation. And um, so my goal really was to, uh, like, to kind of get that workflow, being able to sit down and just kind of have everything in one spot and everything connected and, and working together. Um, but obviously I don't want to spend nearly as much as a, as a full workstation would cost. So basically my, my goal with this uh, was really something where I could just kind of sit down, turn things on, and just start playing and start having fun. Um, my, I use music uh, for relaxation at the end of the day to kind of unwind. And it's just, uh, my, you know, I just want to be able to kind of not get lost in all the technical details of how things work. So oftentimes when, um, when I sit down to play music, I find that, oh, you know, I have some idea of like, oh, I want to play with this thing and this thing. And, oh, they're not syncing right or, you know, the MIDI's not working or there's just something about it that's kind of not working and I have to go and figure it out. And so I end up just kind of getting bogged down and like doing tech support of my own home studio. And that's, uh, you know, pulls me away from the actual music making process. So that's really my goal is to just cut out as much as possible uh, the things that can go wrong and uh, the different configuration options, just have things pre-configured as much as possible so that things work together. You know, they talk through MIDI or sync or whatever it is I'm using. Um, and, uh, and I can record quickly and easily, you know, that kind of thing. So I just, I'm trying to get past this point where I'm, constantly like changing things around and getting bogged down and how things are connected so I can just sit down focus on making music yeah so let me show you uh, what I've put together here okay so here it is kind of an overview shot so uh, this is what I'm calling Frankensynth and you can see it is a keyboard with a bunch of stuff on top of it so let me kind of go through some of the components and how this stuff all works so I'm going to start with probably the least glamorous part, which is the stand. This is a, a jam stands, and uh, you can see it's it's built kind of like a tabletop uh, with four legs, um, as opposed to the more like X or cross style stand uh, keyboard stand. And I found that I just I just like this so much better um, without having something to like knock my knees against. Kind of the only thing I found is there's a little wing nut that's supposed to go right here to help secure it. Uh, that one did bump my leg, so I just removed it, but it still works totally fine. So definitely I can vouch for this jam stands thing being pretty nice. The uh, the legs on the jam stands are also telescoping, so you can bring it up to standing height too, which I really like. Okay, so on the surface here, so uh, starting at the left here, we've got a Volca Bass, a Volca FM. Uh, this is the Korg Nano Control 2. This is a little uh, passive mixer uh, called uh, the Little Bear, I think it's called. Um, Oh, yeah, one yeah one little bear. So this is a little passive mixer. Uh, this is uh, a little battery cell. This is a single 18650 battery um, in an enclosure that gives it a USB output. Uh, that is to power the Korg NTS-1 here. I also have a Monotron delay. And then all of that is sitting on a keyboard here. And this is the, uh, let's see, I think it's the Yamaha 225GM. So it's, it's a Yamaha keyboard from the mid 90s and it does have uh, full MIDI capabilities. And then on the back here, I've got this big fat battery strapped on here. Uh, so this is a rather massive, it's a one pound battery. You see it's got four USB outputs. And right now I'm using it just to power um, a, uh, a rip cord. So this is the, the nine volt rip cord um, that powers the Volcas here. And I'm also using the MyVolts um, five way splitter. I'm currently only using two of those right here, but that all attaches to the back. So this stuff here, this is called dual lock tape. It's like Velcro, but better. You can see, I mean, it's very strong. There we go, so plenty sturdy on there. Um, so the goal of, part one of my goals of this is that everything is battery powered. Um, 
not that it really is meant to be that mobile, but I just kind of, I'm obsessed with battery powered things. So, um, let's see. So yeah, so right now this one is powering both the Volcas, um, and it has plenty of excess ports, so it could power more stuff off of it. Uh, this is passive, so it doesn't take any power. This little battery is powering just the NTS-1. Um, the reason being I found that because I'm using uh, the, the full mixer here is going into the NTS-1, and I find that if I power everything off of one battery, um, I get a little bit of noise through this. Um, so giving this its own battery, it just kind of eliminates that problem. The Monotron uh, Delay has its own internal um, AAA batteries. Uh, it doesn't have a USB battery option, though that's something I'm thinking about modding for the future. The keyboard itself is currently um, powered, uh, currently I have it actually powered uh, with AC power, with the power adapter that came with it. But I've actually tried powering the keyboard off of this thing here, right? So it's a little uh, 12 volt barrel pl plug going to the cigarette lighter style thing, and it totally works. Um, so I could power the Yamaha off of battery power, and the cleanest way to do that would just be another rip cord, uh, the 12 volt rip cord coming off this battery back here. And that would work just fine, I think. Um, I haven't bothered to do that yet, but it's definitely something I might do in the future. Um, the Nano Control 2 is just USB bus powered, so anytime it's plugged in, it gets its power through that USB cable. So. Let's go through a little bit of kind of the functionality or my thoughts around why I've arranged it this way. Okay, so starting on the left here, the Nano Control 2 is probably the least useful uh, thing on here. So pretty much the only thing I use it for is these uh, transport controls right here. So play, pause, record, uh, that kind of stuff. And that's just uh, basically so that I can um, hit record here, start recording what I'm playing into my DAW on the computer without having to turn around and use the keyboard and mouse. So it's just a convenience thing. Um, I also have all of these uh, sliders mapped to different channels in the DAW, so if I wanted to do a little bit of like mixing on the fly, I could. Frankly, I don't though, uh, for the most part. Um, and I kind of just stuck it here because it fits well and it looks cool. Um, the Volca Bass is definitely uh, you know my go-to bass synth and um, I will say that I, I love its sound um, it's not really the best to play with a big MIDI controller like this because of the way MIDI is implemented on it uh, basically if I play it from the big keyboard um, I pretty much always use just the the unison mode meaning I'm, I'm linking all the oscillators together as one big sound and then I'm maybe detuning them a little bit um, whereas the Volca Bass internally, with its internal sequencer in this keyboard, can actually do a lot more powerful stuff. It just can't do that via MIDI control. Uh, so, yeah, so basically the Volca Bass I will use to write kind of more simplistic bass lines, um, but definitely it's not the, the most kind of full featured when it comes to controlling with a MIDI controller like this. Um, the Volca FM, I'd say, is probably my the primary sound that I play with, the sound generation uh, of this whole system. So um, it, of course, is an FM synth and makes all kinds of wonderful sounds. Um, it does not have velocity sensitivity, um, but what's, uh, but they instead give you this velocity slider, uh, which is kind of interesting. So instead of worrying about you know how hard I press the key, I'm using one hand to move the slider and my other hand to play the keys, which is definitely you know a different approach. Um, and that actually pairs really well with this keyboard because this keyboard also <laughs> does not have velocity sensitivity. Um, so true velocity sensitivity means uh, a kind of a smooth range from value zero to value 127, so 120 possible pressure sensitivities on the key. So what this keyboard does do uh, is what's what Yamaha calls touch response, which basically is four velocity values. So you get, it's like soft, medium, hard, and full, like full, uh, full being a 127 velocity value. So really this keyboard's pretty limited when it comes to velocity anyway. So in that sense, it's a good pairing with the Volca FM because they both kind of share in their limitations. I'm not really missing out much there. Volca FM also has a great arpeggiator built in, and I definitely use that sometimes. Um, and then, of course, for both of the Volcas here, I will sometimes use the onboard sequencer, um, but oftentimes, kind of my whole workflow with this workstation is is live playing stuff, so I actually don't use the sequencers all that often. Um, my other thought with this is, you know, I could swap these out for any Volcas I want, right? So, like, for example, I've got a Volca sample here. You know, if I wanted to do something interesting with that, I could just pull one of these out, put this one in its spot, and it would work just fine. Um, so that's kind of gives me, like, nice flexibility for swapping things out in the future. Of course, all the Volcas are the same size, so they'd all work well. 
the issue again being that every Volca has kind of slightly different MIDI implementation, so some of them work better with MIDI uh, and, than others. The one, if I were kind of starting from scratch on this, probably what I would do instead of the Volca bass is the Volca keys, because its MIDI implementation is much better. Um, but, God, the, the filter on the bass, I just, I love it. So, I don't know, they're all, they're all fun. So this section over here is kind of more like my effects section, basically. Um, so I've got this passive mixer here. It's taking sound from all of the possible sound sources, um, and it's outputting it to the the Volk, or sorry, to the Korg NTS-1. So the NTS-1 can apply global effects on top of everything. Uh, the NTS-1 also has its own synth engine. Um, a lot of the times in this setup, I'm not using it. I'm using it purely as an effects box, um, but. If I, with the right adapter cable and that, all that, I could also control it from the big keyboard here if I wanted to. Um, all I would need is a cable like this, right? So I'd have to take the, the full size five pin MIDI out the back of the big keyboard and then go into a, a TRS adapter into the back of the, uh, the NTS-1. So that would work just fine. And in that sense, um, in terms of the sounds it produces uh, for the onboard synth engine, the NTS-1, I'd say, works really well both for ARPs and for uh, bass sounds. Um, definitely the Volca bass has a more interesting filter and so I kind of lean towards that more for bass sounds. Um, but I, I really do like the sound of the Korg NTS-1 synth engine so I do use it sometimes. Um, the, the Monotron Delay is a similar kind of thing. It's like the predecessor of the NTS-1. So I can use it to, um, to route audio through and use it as an effects uh, station and that the, pretty much the only effect it has is delay, but it also routes the audio through the analog filter, which the NTS-1 does not. So, uh, so I really like that, actually. I can basically apply an analog filter to any other instrument, even a digital instrument, such as the, the Volca FM, and I find that pretty satisfying. Um, the actual onboard synth here, I pretty rarely use. I do like it. Um, like, I think it sounds good, but at the moment, since I can only play it through this little touch strip keyboard, I just don't use it that much. There is a mod to give this one MIDI in that I kind of intend to do. Once I have that this thing modded to accept MIDI, then I would play it with the big keyboard here, and I think that'll be pretty fantastic. Um, but for now, I'm using it to apply, uh, apply the filter and to apply delay to other things. So the Yamaha keyboard itself, um, you know, it's fully digital, but it is also technically a synthesizer. Um, so it has all kinds of onboard sounds. And you can't really tweak the sounds much, it's basically just a big bank of presets. Uh, but some of them sound pretty good. And I will say the one that, that I use um, more often than not is just the, the built-in grand piano sound, kind of the default sound of it. Um, and uh, you know I've kind of featured that a little bit before in previous videos. And it just, it just sounds good if I just want a clean piano sound. It sounds pretty nice. And so the way I usually have this routed is the audio output of the Yamaha keyboard. Um, so first of all, I can just give it a master volume control right here. So if I if I want to use it purely as a MIDI controller, I just turn that volume down all the way. Um, but if I want to hear it sound, I can turn that up. This is routed. Uh, let's turn you a little bit. So the, the Yamaha keyboard sound is routed through the monotron delay. And then the monotron delay output goes into this little passive mixer, and then the passive mixer goes into the NTS-1. So basically I can apply two layers of um, effects on top of the built-in Yamaha sounds, um, such as the grand piano sound, um, which is cool because this is definitely a very clean digital kind of sound, um, and this, uh, the monotron delay, gives it like a uh, kind of an analog grittiness to it. Um, and I, I think that's, that's fun, basically to be able to add kind of this like dirty analog uh, filter sound to like a nice clean, uh, you know, simple piano sound or whatever. And then of course I can also add even further effects to the NTS-1, though those are again digital effects, not analog. So one of the big limitations of this setup that I have right now is that um, the Yamaha only has a single MIDI out port, and uh, I'm just using a standard MIDI cable. Currently it's plugged into the Volca FM. So right now if I want to switch between instruments, I physically unplug that and I plug it into, say, the Volca bass. Um, and that's uh, definitely not as clean as I want, so most likely uh, I could buy something like the, um, the Quadra Through that would allow, that would basically solve that problem. Um, or I could also, um, uh, I'm thinking I might actually end up building my own little custom, uh, you know, MIDI splitter for this setup. Because the goal would be to have all of, the, all of the MIDI controllable instruments connected simultaneously, so that would be two Volcas plus the NTS-1, plus maybe the, the Monotron Delay um, once I get that mod done. Um, 
so if I could just have each one on a separate MIDI channel, then the keyboard is actually um, relatively, well, it's not great for changing MIDI on the fly, it's not like the fastest, but it's not too bad. Basically, if, if I just kind of memorize, uh, you, you can navigate the menu by just typing in number to quick jump to that menu setting, and then use the arrows to change between your MIDI channels. So that's an option. Uh, what I've kind of been doing more often though, because the Volcas are really easy to change the MIDI channel on boot. Uh, I just power it off, boot it up, change the MIDI channel on the Volca, and I leave this one always outputting MIDI channel one. That's been kind of my more simplistic workflow, but I think definitely there's room for improvement there. Okay, so let's talk about sync signals for a second. Um, so the Volcas, um, of course, they have, they have MIDI in, um, but they have no MIDI out. And then they also have the built-in sync ports the in and out on both. Um, and most Korg stuff these days also does the, the Volca sync style, which, which is convenient. So for example, between the Volcas and the NTS-1, they can use those sync cables, which is nice. So um, generally, I mean, basically everything on here only has MIDI in, except for the Yamaha uh, keyboard, which has MIDI out. So um, that's kind of the, the bigger challenge I'm working around. The easiest uh, approach that I've taken though, is I just do MIDI out on the keyboard, to MIDI in on typically the Volca FM, but it could be either Volca. Then I'm gonna go sync out from the Volca, and that's going to go um, to something else. So let's, let's kind of rearrange this a little bit so it's maybe a little more clear. Okay, so this is kind of how I, I've been frequently uh, using it. So I've got um, the MIDI out from the Yamaha keyboard, and that's going to MIDI in on the Volca FM. And then sync out from the Volca FM to sync in on the Volca bass then sync out from the Volca bass through this kind of long skinny cable to sync in on the NTS-1. Um, and that way everything is in sync. And actually I do like on this Yamaha keyboard, at any point if you just press the plus and minus uh, buttons here, it changes your tempo. So I can change the global tempo for all of this. The, the Yamaha keyboard is the master clock for all of the other ones. Um, so that's pretty quick and convenient really. The Monotron Delay has no sync capabilities whatsoever, <laughs> so it's, it, is, it just is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's how that's all working. The other thing is that the Yamaha does also have a MIDI in. Um, I haven't really been using that, but like if I wanted to sync to the tempo in my DAW, for example, that's probably where I would use the MIDI in so that it would then uh, trigger all the rest of this stuff. The other thing I'll do sometimes is I'll bring in ex an extra long cable um, in order to sync this all with something else. And again, there's since the Yamaha doesn't really do a sync uh, setting, that takes a bit of configuration and that's definitely something that I wanna work on. Typically what I would do is I'd go sync in on the NTS-1 and then kind of reverse the signal path so that I would take sync out from the NTS-1 to feed everything else. And I would tell the Volca FM to ignore um, MIDI clock or I think is how I would do that. But yeah, that's an area where it's um, the ability to sync with outside instruments from all of this, it's not perfect right now. It's something I'm still kind of working on. And again, this whole section really, my focus in any time I'm playing this is more around synth sounds, um, you know, writing kind of more of the melodic or bass line parts of a song. Uh, so I, at the moment, I don't really have any sort of percussion or rhythm section to this. Now the keyboard itself does actually have its own built-in, you know, rhythm generator type stuff. And sometimes I do play with its little cheesy sounds and stuff just because it's fun. But I uh, tend to have kind of a more dedicated rhythm section over here, which is primarily my um, model samples. And then I have two Volca samples. Often I just use one at a time, um, but yeah, I have two if I want to use both. So that's kind of been my, my rhythm section lately, and I've been working on them in separate workflows, basically. So I'll, I'll kind of, I'll do rhythm and the synth parts separately, usually. So something else I've been thinking about, just because it would be fun. Like I said, the, the Yamaha keyboard can run off of this cable. Um, this is a, uh, a little car jump starter, so it's got USB out, but it also has a 12 volt out for jump starting a car. Um, so I'm pretty sure, basically I could make a custom cable that comes out of here and goes into a barrel plug like this, and I could run the whole Yamaha keyboard off of this little battery. Now again, the simpler and easier way is just to, to buy the, the appropriate um, 12 volt rip cord, and that's maybe what I end up doing. But um, I just, I don't have a lot of uses for this battery because it's kind of depleted, so I can't actually like use it to jumpstart a car anymore. So uh, I just thought that would be an interesting thing. The issue there being that, um, 
a, a jump starter port like this, it can output hundreds of amps. And so like normally when we're running music gear like this, you know, we're like a keyboard like this, it's 12 volts at maybe one amp or two amps or something. It's a very small amount. So it's pretty safe to play with that. Like you could fry your bit of gear, but it's not gonna hurt you if you get shocked, right? Versus uh, 12 volts at 200 amps or 400 amps or 600 amps that you know this type of thing can put out, that can absolutely kill you. And I mean kill you instantly. Uh, like, you know, you one touch of that can stop your heart, basically. And if there's no one around to revive you, then you're just dead. So playing with a jump starter like this, it's not really a great idea. <laughs> and so I'm gonna say, um, if you're thinking about this kind of thing, just for safety's sake, just go for the 12 volt rip cord. It's, it's worth it. Um, I might play with this because I have poor sense like that, but <laughs> yeah, it's not the, not the best idea. As for cable management, it's not amazing, but it's not too bad either. I mean, this is kind of the biggest challenge and similar to like this battery that I made to power my model samples. Um, and you can see I used, this is 18650 cell, which is that, that's this type of battery right here. I used this shrink wrap to kind of contain it and some zip ties. I did a similar thing here. So I used a bunch of shrink wrap and all the excess cable and then some zip ties around it. Um, and also one of these cable ties, because if I ever want to power more than just these two things, I can access these leads by just opening up that cable tie. So definitely it's not the cleanest, but you know, it's totally fine because it just sits in the back here and hides away and I never think about it. Also, and this battery, I mean, it's just huge. It'll power things for so long. I'd say I charge this battery probably less than once a month um, because it, it just doesn't, doesn't run down very fast because all this stuff is pulling a very small amount of power. Likewise, the NTS-1 battery um, that I have, this dedicated battery here, yeah, again, I probably charge it once a month or less. Um, all these things are just very low power draw. So running it all on batteries is, really hasn't been a problem at all. Oh, I should also, of course, mention the final audio output from this whole thing is the audio out of the NTS-1 here. And that is kind of the, the biggest annoyance, I think, just that NTS-1 has its audio output on the front. I wish it was on the back like all the rest. Um, but I, I at least got this right angle cable that kind of helps helps contain it there. And I've been meaning to tape it down or something here. I just haven't done that. Kind of fits nicely into those little grooves. And then from that cable, I go to my USB audio interface and then record into the DAW. It's typically how I do it. Okay, so let's play a little bit and see how this all sounds. Uh, so I turn on this battery back here and turn on the Volcas. There we go. And um, turn on the NTS-1, which I don't have a switch for, just plug it in. There's that, that'll power on. And then the monotron delay again has its own little batteries in there. There we go, oops. Everything is on. Okay, so I'm playing at a bit of an awkward angle here just to try to let you see what's going on. There's not really a great camera angle I've found to, to show this whole thing at once. But anyway, um, so this is um, output for the keyboard. I'm just going to plug in a simple little headphone splitter, all right? Plug that in here. Okay, so I've turned down everything else. Um, so this is just the sound of the keyboard itself. It's a clean sound, right? So I'm now splitting the output. Uh, one is going into my channel four on my mixer here. It's coming out through the NTS-1, but I'm not actually doing anything on the NTS-1. And then um, the other is going out to the monotron delay, which is on channel three, but I currently have that uh, turned off. So um, we're just hearing this piano sound itself. Okay, so nice clean piano sound. And again, the other thing I like about this is because it's digital, there's no limitation of voices, right? I can, I can play as many keys at a time as I want. Uh, but that sound by itself is a little boring. So I can bring in the mix through the monotron delay. And you hear all that noise it adds just when I turn it up. All right, that's just the noise from this by itself. So it's a very, very noisy filter. Right, but sorry, that clipped a little bit. So that's mixing both the clean piano sound and the kind of distorted uh, sound coming through this, which I think is pretty cool. All right, and I can add a little bit of actual f delay on this. <laughs> so 
So, <laughs> so that combo alone, just the uh, um, just the built-in grand piano sound plus some kind of distortion from the monotron delay, and again, I can layer how much of the clean sound or the dry sound versus how much of the wet sound I get in there, and I think that's super fun. So that by itself is pretty powerful, and like this. Yamaha piano, I got it for free. Uh, you can also find them at thrift stores for maybe 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something. So they're pretty pretty affordable because it's old tech from the mid 90s. This I got for $30 on eBay. So I mean, that right there, like you can have a ton of fun with just these two things. Um, you could also <laughs> add in that. Uh, this is my, my whale noise specialty synth. <laughs> that's, that's its forte is whale noises. Um, then of course I can add in you know tons of other stuff like let's get some reverb on here, um, let's get some of that. So yeah, you can see for this kind of ambient experimental stuff I've been playing with, that that all this is a really great setup. Um, now, uh, let's also throw in some sounds from the Volca. So the Volca FM, kind of its specialty, I think, is its ability to play patches from the original Yamaha DX7, which is just a classic synth, one of the best synths of all time, I think. And um, so I have loaded up a bunch of DX7 patches on here, and my absolute favorite is this one called Wet Piano. And um, so let's hear just that one by itself. So turn everything else down, turn this up. So I have the FM is on channel one on my mixer here. Oh, let's turn off the reverb. Again, with that uh, velocity slider here, right? So, so that's how you change velocity versus me hitting harder, hitting softer does nothing. It's all just through this. And you can also transpose on the Volk FM, which is kind of interesting. Right. The Volk FM has three note polyphony, so I can play a three note chord. That kind of thing. Um, and then of course I could also play an internal sequence. I could also use this uh, big keyboard to record a sequence into the Volca FM, which I do sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's all great. And because this, this wet piano basically it's a distorted piano sound, I'm also layering that with my grand piano and the modifications over here. Basically I just kind of, I've been really enjoying just playing with these various levels of these piano sounds by themselves. Let's try another uh, little thing here. All right, and because the Yamaha keyboard has basically infinite polyphony, um, it can, I can play all 80, or I think it's 61 keys actually, I can play all 61 keys at once. Um, the Volk FM only does three notes. So, for example, if I play a three note chord and then add a fourth note, this one drops a note, but you don't really notice that much because I'm filling in the sound with all this other stuff as well. My other favorite thing to play with on the Volca FM is the algorithm, this knob here. Here you can get these kind of glitchy effects as you scroll through the algorithms. Um, so yeah, uh, to me, that's this is all kind of a really nice pairing. It's all it all kind of works well together. It sounds nice, and I can just kind of get a rough mix on the fly through this. Um, 
And then the final thing, so with the Volca bass, again, if I want to play it directly, I got to unplug this, plug this in over here. Let's turn off everything else except for the Volca bass. Um, let's see, I must have you on the wrong channel. So again, switching channels on the Volcas is pretty quick. I think you hold memory when you boot up. It tells you, yep, channel two. So I'm gonna just change that to channel one. Hit record. There we go. Once it boots. There we go. So now I'm controlling the Volca bass with this. Oh, I still got this reverb on. There we go. Okay, so Volca bass is an Excellent bass sound. Like I said, typically I use it more in this unison mode uh, where it's linking together all three of the oscillators uh, into one big fat sound. And then you can detune them a bit. One limitation of this, the keyboard does not have an octave control. So like the keys that are here are the only ones you can play. And the Volca bass can actually play even lower notes than my lowest note on the keyboard here. So if I want to play those lower notes, I have to use the onboard little thing here, which uh, does have octave control here, right? So there. The, the, uh, these 15 notes are below what I am capable of playing on this keyboard. Frankly, has not been a big issue for me, but you know, it's something to point out. But this thing, it just sounds so good, especially the main reason uh, I think when I feel like playing with the Volca bass, it's because I want to live play a filter. And so I'll be playing something down at this end. As a general workflow thing, often I kind of spend a little time trying to write some little baseline for this. Again, probably a simple baseline with unison mode. Uh, and I record that into the internal sequencer. All right, then I'll hit play. Let's just pull up one of my previous ones maybe. Okay. So like there's a little baseline playing on that, right? And I'll come back to live play on top of it. So that'll be kind of the foundation of the song and then I'll play all this other stuff live on top of it. Turn everything back up. I think maybe this one's, there it goes. So yeah, really this, uh, the transpose functionality in the Volca FM, it's pretty useful here because I can have the Volca FM always playing like say one octave higher than you know my piano sounds in here, that kind of thing. It's pretty nice. Okay, so the, uh, 
the other kind of big challenge of this whole thing is by using a passive mixer here, I do get a bit of volume drop coming out of all the things that are feeding into it. So if I, that's one of the reasons why for this particular setup, I haven't really been using the NTS-1's onboard um, synth engine too much because it, woo, hear that? <laughs> Turn all that stuff off. So the onboard synth engine can easily overpower all the other stuff because of the voltage, or the, sorry, because of the, the audio, the volume drop. Well, voltage drop and volume drop, it's the same problem really. So because this is reducing the overall volume, um, I can't necessarily get it to be louder than the internal synth here. So if I want to play with this internal synth, I really, you have to use the filter, which is not the same as volume control, obviously, but it's, uh, you know, it's kind of the best that you got with this one. So for the moment, I haven't really been worrying about that. And again, I'm using this primarily as an effects box, uh, which it really excels at. So yeah, I think that's, that's generally it. I uh, hope you can see I've been having a lot of fun with this. And I've been featuring it in a lot of kind of recent things. Like I said, it, again, everything is just attached with this, uh, dual lock tape on the back of everything. Um, it all just sits really well. And I like that I can kind of swap out components over time. Um, you know, it's all really flexible in that way. And you know, plenty sturdy, nothing's gonna fall off the table or anything. So yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun.